Hey guys, Merry Christmas. The holidays are approaching and today I'm going to show you how to make this basic present. Shouldn't be too difficult and won't take too long. Let's get into it. So to start out with the present, we're going to use the default cube. I know it's groundbreaking, but we're using it. So step one, go to modifiers and add a subdivision surface modifier. Now this is going to make it look not like a cube, but that's okay. So next step is to go into edit mode by hitting tab. And then we're gonna select all of our sides and then press Control and B. This is going to bevel. And as you can see, we're getting a nice shape here. And I'm going to leave this on two. So scroll your mouse wheel all the way down and you can see on the bevel menu that we're only beveling um, uh, one segment and not two, just like that. So now that we've beveled a little bit, we can notice that we're not exactly getting a good look. So I'm gonna right click and shade smooth. And then I'm gonna increase the subdivision amount to two. And now we have a bit of a better look. But this is still not exactly what we want for the gift. So I'm going to go into edit mode once again. I'm going to press Control R. And then that is going to give us a loop cut around the center. Again, that is Control and R. And then I'm going to use my mouse wheel and scroll up twice. And that's going to give us three loop cuts. Then I'm going to left click and then right click to snap them in the center. And now that we have this, I'm going to press 2 to go into edge select. You can also do it by selecting this button up here. And then I'm going to hold Alt and select this center loop. And then what that'll do is select the entire loop of edges. So then I'm going to enable proportional editing. And then in my settings up here, I'm going to check connected only. And then I'm going to choose linear. So then I'm going to press scale. And as you can see, I can scale it and make it look like it's a little more plump. So it's sort of bulging, which is kind of what we want. And so I'm going to do that. I'm just going to bulge a little bit. And you can use your mouse wheel, by the way, to make the uh, sphere of influence bigger or smaller. I'm just going to find something that looks OK. I don't want it to bulge too much, just a little bit. And now we have a nice shape. And now that we have our main shape, we need a lid. And so to do that, I'm going to go into edit mode once again and go into face select. And you can do that by pressing three or the button up here on your uh, menu. Select the top face and press control and then a plus button on your number pad, just like that. And you have all of this selected. Now, if you don't have a number pad, you can always select all of these by hand like so. But yeah, so once you have these faces selected, I want you to press Alt and E on your keyboard. That is gonna open up this extrude faces along normals button. And I want you to click that. Then we're going to extrude however big we want the lid to be. And I want the, big, the lid to be just a little bit uh, bigger than the present. So I'll make it about that size. And so now if I exit edit mode, you can see that it sort of looks like a lid, but there's not really a separation between the box and the lid. It looks like they kind of just blend together. And to fix that, I'm going to go into edit mode once again. And then under here, I'm going to press Control R and go between these two like this. And that'll give us a loop cut. And I'll place it closer towards the uh, middle uh, other loop cut, just like that. So there's a little bit of space right there. So now that I've done that, it looks very much separate. And so now we have our base shape and we just need to do the ribbons and do that. Let's get going. So I'm going to press tab. And I'm going to press control R on the top up here and now scroll up on my mouse wheel one time. So that's going to give us two loop cuts. Then I'll left click and then right click to snap it to the center. And I'll do that once more, go in the opposite direction, uh, control R, scroll up, left click and then right click to snap to the center. So now we have our base for the ribbons. And so to make the ribbons, I'm going to press three, press alt and select this loop. And that will give us the whole face selection. Now, make sure you're on face select. Otherwise, if you press alt and select right here, it will probably go that way with the edges. So face select, alt and select. So then I'm going to press shift D to duplicate those guys. And that's going to duplicate the faces. I'll right click, snap them back to where they were. I'll press P and choose selection. So now if we, uh, Go to object mode we can see that we have two objects we have this one and then we still have our main object and i will name this one ribbon one and then i'll do the same thing going the other way select the main object go into edit mode select the faces going the opposite and then press shift d right click p selection and now we have that ribbon so to make these stand out and the faces not glitch into each other i'm going to go into edit mode with one of the ribbons selected press a I'll press Alt E, just like we did a little bit ago, extrude faces along normals and extrude them out just a little bit. So we have some thickness. 
And now for the next one, I'm going to do the exact same thing. Press tab A, Alt E, shoot faces along normals, shoot out just a little bit. And as we can see, they're overlapping a little bit. So I'm going to scale this one up slightly just so that it goes a little bit over the other one. And so now we have our two ribbons. And if we can see, there's a little bit of a gap here. And if you want, you can go back through and you can uh, move the edges back closer if you didn't want to scale it that way. But it's up to you what you want to do. Another way to fix it is you can also go back and instead of scaling it up, you can just simply take this face right here and then move it up on the Z axis like this. And then on the bottom, you can do the exact same thing and move it down on the Z axis here. And there you have it. We have our ribbons. So now we need a little bow on top, and that is actually quite simple. So with one of the ribbons selected, I'll press tab, and I'm gonna select the top three faces like this, shift D to duplicate, P and separate by selection, just like we did a minute ago. So now I'm gonna take this guy, and I'm gonna move him up a bit. So this is gonna be our ribbon. So go into edit mode, I'm gonna press one to go into vertices select, and then I'm going to select these four vertices right here. I'm gonna press shift, and S, and then that's going to pull up this pie menu. And I'm going to move the 3D cursor to selected, which will move it right there. So now we need to get it to sort of bend like a bow instead of being flat. And to do that, we're going to select these two vertices, and then up here in this menu, instead of moving around the medium point or individual origins, I'm going to choose 3D cursor. And so what that will do is if I rotate it on, say, the Y axis, it's going to rotate like this which is exactly what I want. So now I'm going to enable proportional editing again and then rotate on the Y axis just like this. And there we have it. We have our bow sort of working out. Now the bend here is a little bit off. And so I can take these guys and then I can move them on the X, lower proportional editing, and we have more of a bow shape. So what we need to do now is on this right here, we need it to sort of flatten out so it doesn't look like it's sort of tapering into the center. So I'm going to press Control R, going horizontally, and I'm going to drag that edge loop all the way up here. Then I'm going to do the exact same thing down here, Control R and drag the edge loop up here. And as we can see, we have a pretty good bow shape. The only problem is it's not looking as big as we want it to. So I'm going to go into edit mode again, and I'm going to select all of these vertices, press Shift S, move the cursor to these vertices, so that I can move our origin point by going into object mode, right click, set origin, origin to geometry. And so now, or origin to 3D cursor. Set origin, origin to 3D cursor. So now when we have this, we can rotate it on uh, the axis of the 3D cursor, but we're still up here and we change that to median point. Just like that. And we can rotate on the X or the Y, and that also means we can scale it on the Y axis and the X axis. So I'm gonna press S and X. I'm just gonna scale it out a little bit, just like that. And then I'm going to go into top view, move him a little bit more towards the center and down a little bit like this, rotate him. And there we have a start of a good looking bow. So I'm gonna scale them up just a little bit, scale ZZ to give it a little bit more of some oom, like that. And I think that's looking pretty good. Scale it on the X maybe. And the bow's looking all right. I'm gonna scale them down just a little bit. There we go. And just a little bit of fiddling just to scale a little bit. Just to get the scale right and the proportions looking okay. And I think that looks pretty good. So now we just need the other side. And to do that, I'm just gonna press Shift D, rotate Z, and then type in 180 on the keyboard. And just look at that. We have our present. Now we just need to add some materials. So. To do that, let's go ahead and go into our rendered preview. And if you're wondering what the lighting setup is in my scene, all I did was I went down here, disabled scene world and enabled this uh, built-in HDR app. So we have some nice lighting. So now let's look at the materials for this guy. So I've already made them and I'm gonna show you how to do it. So for the red, all you need to do is go to your base color and your HSV, switch the hue to zero and the saturation and value to one. And then from there, metallic to one and lower the roughness to like 0.35-ish. Little look about like this when you're done. Then for the gold, I just got the same thing. And I took the color and I put a hue of 0.105. And actually, I'm just going to show you the hex code. I used F4C93C. 
Again, that is F4, C9, 3C for the color. And then for the roughness settings and everything, I just made the metallic about a 0.87, something like that looked pretty good. And then the roughness, I just lowered to a 0.15. So once you've done all that, you can just apply the material to each object. And so I'll select all the white ones and then the gold one last, press Control L and link materials. And just like that, we have our finished present and it looks pretty darn good. And for one last touch, if you want to smooth out the ribbons a little bit, you can always up the subdivision count on these guys. This was from a two to a three. It'll just round out the edges and look a little bit nicer. So thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed. Leave a like if you did, and I'll see you guys in a future video. Adios.